Welcome to Drinking Bros, presented by GhostBed.com. Welcome to Drinking Bros Podcast, Anthony. Thanks. Strange times we're in right now. Is it? Yes, it is. A lot of wild shit going on out in the world. This all seems very normal. Does it? To me, yeah. Doesn't? None of this seems normal to me. None of this seems normal to me, including the story you're going to hear today. Well, if you were wondering, like we, everybody kept asking over the years, what's going to happen with these kids uh, that we weren't allowed to discipline all these years? Mm -hmm. Well, here Here it is. Here it is. Uh, Who do we have on the show today, D'Anthony? I'm not telling. Ah, you got to. It's a fucking secret, bro. (laughs) Is it? (laughs) No. Her name's Erin Scanlon. She's one of, she's another one of uh, Natalie Kwam's, uh, uh, clients, you may remember her from the Richard Stasekall case. Yes, one of the finest attorneys yep. in the land. Yep. Uh, welcome to the show. How are you? Hi, I'm good. Thanks. How are you guys? Where are you guys at today? Where are you at? I'm in Southern Pines, North Carolina. Oh, okay. Are you with Natalie today? No, I'm not. Gotcha, gotcha. Because I, I wondered, she seems to work tirelessly for her clients. Mm-hmm. Um, always working. Always working. Um, so I, I didn't know if she was with you as well. Um, obviously, with Richard Stasekal, um, what was it, four hundred twenty-two million dollars? Uh, that bill was able to be passed. I don't know. I mean, it's it's uh, part of the National Defense Authorization Act, so it's a huge budget. It was, yeah, piece. It, it, it was a big one. It was a big one. Um, you're here today to tell us a little about your case that you're co- currently going through, and we like to to kind of spotlight um, special cases like this on our show. Uh, to bring more awareness to it. We were certainly able to do it in Richard's case, mm-hmm. and uh, we'd love to be able to do it um, in yours as well. Are you able to share the details of everything that's going on in your lawsuit? Yeah. Yep. Oh. Yeah, so um, you want me to just start at the beginning? or? Yes, start wherever you're comfortable starting. Okay, so when I was in the military... I was sexually assaulted by, come to find out, another service member. I went to CID a couple of days later to report it, and CID turned me away. And I didn't really know why. Um, They said it was a jurisdictional issue, that it was going to have to be the Fort Bragg, um, not Fort Bragg investigating, but Fayetteville Police investigating. And that was kind of one of the first things in the process that was fucked up. Um, The military should have, CID should have listened to me from the very beginning um, because I was on active duty. Um, What what branch were you in? I'm sorry to interrupt you. What branch were you in? The Army. Okay. Yep. Um, I was in the 82nd at Fort Bragg. Okay. Um, So Fayetteville Police Department does the entire investigation it takes about a year and a half. And so a year and a half later, Fayetteville turned it over to Cumberland County District Attorney's Office, and they set a trial date. Well, the week before the trial, the military contacted me again and said, oh, hold on. We didn't know the perpetrator was active duty as well, um, which was not true we're going to take the case from Cumberland County and we're going to do a court martial instead. And so at this point, I'm like, all right, whatever. I don't care. what I don't understand. I'm not a lawyer. Do what you got to do. Like I just came forward in the reporting process and whatever. So another four, three, four months pass and Fort Bragg does a court martial. And that's when things start getting, like, even more fucked up. Um, Some of the issues that we ran into is that, well, initially in the investigation, when Fayetteville Police Department was doing the investigation, they asked the Army to interview a few witnesses, and the Army said no, because they were active duty service members in a certain unit. So the army was like, nope, too bad. You can't interview these people. So when the um, military is getting ready for the trial, 
the prosecution asked again for those witnesses and the army said again no you're not you're not talking to these witnesses um when instead they could have just made it a classified trial because it was already going to be a court martial so that was one of the issues that we ran into the second one that was really crazy is the army has this program in the in the sharp program for the army they have lawyers who are called the special victims councils the svcs and they're assigned to the victim so you have the defense attorneys you have the prosecution attorneys and then you have the special victims council whose only job is to protect the victim and the victim's interests and the army started this program um i think i think all of dod has it actually sorry i just say the army but um, DOD has this program, and they started it for like collateral misconduct. So if there was underage drinking or drug use, they didn't want the service member to not come forward and report the sexual assault. So while we're getting ready for trial, I'm on my fourth SVC in two years because they kept moving, they kept getting PCS and whatnot. And my SVC tells me she's not going to be able to be at the trial because she's going on leave. So I'm like a mess at this point. I'm like, okay, I don't even care. Transfer me to your, your other, S, the other SVC, um, whatever. I'm just, I just got to get through this trial. Well, come to find out her command, her SVC command knew that this motion was coming. And it was that the JAG officer judge, who was the judge for the court martial in the trial, in the middle of the trial, he ordered my SVC, my attorney, to come testify against me. So this lady, she was a, she was a captain. She was on leave because her unit told her to go on leave so we can avoid this. She's on leave. They sent the US Marshals to get her off leave to come to trial and testify against me, the victim, her client. Wow. Um, so. how, I, I don't <laughs> understand. That's weird. I mean, obviously it's weird, but how does, what's the legal precedent for that? I mean, I, I know the military's rules for conducting a trial are much different than a civilian court, but that's, that there's um, no legal precedent like for that. You can't uh, necessarily. Well, that person would have been a civilian, right? That's not an active. That's a sub. No, so she was active duty. Oh, really? So you can be yeah. compelled to testify for active duty. What? What? For what purpose would she be testifying against you? Like, what did she say that was supposed to be negative about you? She was saying that I, um, behind closed doors in our meetings that I refused to talk to the defense attorney before the trial. That was the whole like big thing that they wanted her to testify against me. Um, what? Okay. I, I want to go back just a little bit, if, if you don't mind. Um, one of the, the things that you said early on was uh, witnesses weren't allowed to testify. If you don't mind me asking, where did this happen that there was witnesses involved? In... Um, in Fayetteville mm -hmm. at this, the perpetrator organized a event for his military nonprofit that he's like the founder of. And they had rented this warehouse, like, like warehouse, literally warehouse in Fayetteville that they were like throwing parties at mm -hmm. and inviting people over to. And at the end of the night, my friend and I found out, found out, found ourselves there. Um, and there, so there were like other people around. Got it. Got it. Um, and I <clears> guess, <throat> because this will lead me to my next question of, do you have to go through the military in a process like this? Why isn't, why can't this go through the normal justice system? So what is supposed to happen is because it occurred off post in Fayetteville, mm -hmm. The military in Fayetteville, but because I was on active duty, the military and Fayetteville are supposed to work together. The military would take the lead on the investigation and Fayetteville would do what they needed to do because like of um, the location being in Fayetteville. Mm -hmm. And why didn't that happen in this case? 
Well, I, I don't want to uh, editorialize here, but it happened because the guy was a member of a special operations unit. Got it, got it, got and it. So just, I'm not a just a, yeah, and I'm asking from a, a civilian Yeah, not just here. a special operations unit, but the special operations unit. Gotcha. Um, but if he's not active duty, wh- why does it matter? <clears throat> I guess, well, my understanding is, is he was on the way out, right, at the time? Like he was... He was PC I or not? He was, he was ETSing. I think he was being moved to a different unit. Mm, I see. Oh, okay, gotcha, gotcha. So he was still in at that point. Yeah, and I, so no one even told me that he was in the military for like three or four weeks. I had no idea. What's the process like for you after this happens? Do you call the police first? Or force? Uh, pardon me. Do you call the police first and then? the military afterwards? Like, how does that work in a situation like this? So what I did was told a friend and my friend took me to the hospital because if you're going to report it, the most important thing to do is preserve the evidence. And so that's done by doing the rape kit. Mm -hmm. And that's at a hospital. And then usually when someone comes into the hospital and says, I need to do a rape kit, the hospital will notify law enforcement yeah they're required to do that unless you say don't notify law enforcement then then they won't gotcha um yeah because this this is a whole new world for me and a whole new ball game and this hasn't happened to to anyone i know therefore i'm curious about it yeah we've never had a guest like this on the show and and uh, i mean it was kind of last minute from natalie but i think with everything going on right now and what we've tried to do here on the show and use this platform to outline or to highlight issues that are going on mm-hmm. this is your case is not the only one obviously there's been a big push recently over the last what four or five years for some accountability for military sexual assault there's been uh, a lot of bills that have been presented none of them have passed yet that i'm aware of and that's what one of the things that you're currently working on in addition to again defeating the fairies doctrine but uh something that brings it home right now is that there's a woman missing from fort hood as well vanessa Guillen, i think her name is is that right yeah. Yeah. So she's been missing for some time now. And nobody knows what the fuck happened. Like this woman just goes, just disappears from the largest military base in the United States. Strange. It's very bizarre. A lot of fucked up shit happens in that situation. So I think it's uh, important to listen to these things and highlight the systemic failure. Look, the military is a difficult place to get any sort of justice, no matter who you are. Mm-hmm. Right. But it's when you add in these extra elements, like. Um, you're absolutely right that a classified trial would be in order for something like this, but uh, good luck getting JSOC to fucking cooperate with something like that, frankly. I mean, that's unless they're, unless they're compelled to by the courts, and even the courts, they'll tell the fuck off. To be, I mean, JSOC is JSOC. That, that whole, that, that, that fucking, uh, I, I don't know what you would call it, but that trope in movies, like, I only report to the president. Well, in some cases, it's actually true. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, there's layers of fucking reporting, but in reality, the only people that can bring the hammer down is the JSOC commander in that situation. Maybe the fucking chiefs, joint chiefs, but, yeah, yeah, yeah. like, it's it's a serious situation. So how long has this been going on? How long you have you been kind of been battled in these legal back and forths? So I was assaulted in September of 2016. Jesus the- Christ. Four years ago? Yeah. The trial was um, June of 2018, and then I've been working with Natalie since about November, December of 2018. Did you get justice at the trial in 2018? No. You did not? (laughs) No. Was no one allowed to testify? Like, how did that process play out? So, as as a witness and... The, the victim witness in the trial, I was not allowed to sit in any of the rest of the trial except for my own testimony. So that really sucks. Like you can't even hear what the other side is saying. Is that part of the military? I don't think so. I've never heard of uh, that. I mean, I, one, of, one of the things you're guaranteed by the criminal justice system is the ability to face your accuser or face the perpetrator mm-hmm. in open court. That's like one of the things you're guaranteed, right? Yeah. That seems weird. I don't know. I've never been in a military trial before. I don't know what happened, but it was, it, it all, it, in addition, happened under very shaky circumstances, not to uh, like steal any of your thunder making your point here, but uh, the trial was set for like several days from then. And then the military took it over. It wasn't like they yeah. immediately took that shit over. The trial date was set. 
and then they were well, like, now we're going to take that. Is that right? Yes. And the, the, the um, Cumberland County, the DA's office, is not going to take just any case to trial. The DA is an elected official's position, and so yeah. they're not going to take the case that they think they're going to lose. So the fact that the civilians got all the way to that point, and then the military just ripped it from them, it was very suspicious. And there's a lot of he said, uh, she said stuff. Like there's one story that uh, the the military demanded it, and then there's a, the story from the military side that Cumberland County said they couldn't do the case and handed it over, right? Mm-hmm. So both of these organizations are full of shit. You know what I mean? Everybody's just trying to fucking lay the blame off on somebody else, essentially, which is nothing new in yeah, these types of cases. No, I, and look, and, and it happens far too often. It's it's one of those things, though, if you if you went to the hospital, you got the, the rape uh, test done, and you have the DNA, and it matches up with the, uh, you know, uh, the guy who assaulted you, I don't understand. Like, this seems pretty clear cut to me. What was their What was their reasoning uh, to say uh, not guilty on this one? Um, well, the defense has has to argue at that point that it was consensual mm. and that I regretted it after. It'd be <laughs> it, it, yeah, it's a tough one. If you went to the hospital immediately, that, I mean, that regret usually doesn't set in for most people until a few days afterwards, uh, not right, right after and, the incident happens. And the happens. fact that, you know, I had to work for two years to keep this ongoing. I mean, that's a lot of work for one night. Yeah, exactly. Um, so w- what is the, what's the hope now? Um, why are you working with Natalie and what do you hope happens from your case? So the reason I'm working with Natalie is because I I found her because of Rich Sayskull. He's paved the way for a lot of this. So huge thank you to him. Mm -hmm. But she was like, you know, she heard my case like, wait, what? Your lawyer testified against you? Um, This is ridiculous. So we tried to sue the military for negligence. And you can't do that because of the Ferris Doctrine. Mm. And so what my bill, um, the so it's like the military med- uh, military sexual assault accountability bill is going to be very similar to the medical accountability bill. Mm-hmm. It's just forcing the DOD to follow their own policies. And if it's documented when a service member comes in and, and reports a sexual assault and they get turned away, um, they do a rape kit. It sits on the shelf for six months, a year, three years, ten years. The process isn't being followed. Then the victim can file a claim against DOD. Gotcha, gotcha. And and when your lawyer testified against you, what did he say? That was, um, it was that she said that I told her I did not want to talk to the defense attorney beforehand. What is what's who cares? Like the defense attorney has every right to cross examine you during trial, but not to fucking get access to you before the trial. There's no fucking like they, they get the same uh, the same. Uh, what do you call it? Dis- discovery. Yeah, that that right. wh- whatever the prosecution enters into evidence, they get that discovery. But yeah, you yeah. can't just like you don't get to question the goddamn victim before the trial. That's that's not a thing. Yeah. Is it? I mean, and maybe in the military. I've never been in a military no, trial, but that doesn't sound right. It's voluntary, and my advi- my lawyer advised me not to. She said they're just going to try to intimidate you. If you want, you can just introduce yourself, but that's it. We're not going to have you answer any questions or anything. And the reason the the reasoning that the judge used to get this odd testimony in is that something I told my attorney something, and then she told the prosecution. So he argued that. I pierced my veil of confidentiality. I forfeited my confidentiality with my attorney by telling her something that she then relayed to the prosecution, which is how the process of having an attorney works. Mm -hmm. Um, How prevalent is sexual assault in the military? I would say, because I'm pretty open at talking about my experience, I would say... um, Pretty much everyone I tell, uh, either them or they know someone 
um, one of their friends has been assaulted. Mm. Yeah, it's it's strange because when you think of the military, you automatically think of dudes. I think as a civilian, at least. Yeah, I think women comprise something like thirteen to sixteen percent of the military, something like that. It's, it's a my, definitely a minority. And you're you're spending so much time with what? If let's say it is thirteen percent, eighty per seven. 87% males. Mm-hmm. Um, man, I, I would have to imagine that would be really difficult day in and day out. Uh, what made you want to join the military in the first place? I, uh, I was already in college uh, at U of A, University of Arizona. Um, and I decided to join the ROTC program because I really just like wanted to do something good with my life. I wanted to give back and help others. And I thought the military would be a good way to do that. So you left U of A? No, so I did the ROTC program and then I commissioned as an officer. Okay. Okay. Um, And when you're on a base like this, do you automatically try to find other girls that you can chat with and associate with and and all that other stuff just to, to have something in common? Because I, I would imagine going from University of Arizona, I've, I've been there a few times, rad, rager, party school, but it's 50-50, girls and guys, right? Mm-hmm. right. And then you're thrown <laughs> into this environment where it's 87% males. I would have to imagine when you get in, you're probably trying to find just some form of girlfriend you can hang out with and chat with to say, hey, man, are you going through the same experiences that I'm going through in this? Yeah, a little bit. Um, I guess since ROTC, I was already kind of used to being – in the in a minority but it's very even if you wanted that that female friendship um it's hard to come by because there's so few females especially female officers and they're not always very nice to each other really <laughs> that's a thing yeah i would say females are probably the, you know the meanest to each other than they are to others that's what my wife always says too she's like dude behind the scenes girls are fucking ruthless to each other yeah uh why do you think that is competition uh yeah i don't know yeah because dan Uh, dan sometimes will throw in a pretty little wig yeah and uh you know he'll get into it with with some some girls around the office i uh you know look i feel uh that women are underrepresented here so i you know, occasionally wig up, I wig up, yeah. hold that flag up. Standard, the standard, <laughs> of is, course I am the standard of femininity, obviously. Yeah. Uh, the, the, so then are they meaner to you those days? Cause you're probably prettier than them. Yes. Them? Yeah. I mean, they, they judge me because of my beard. Like it's <laughs> all women wish they could grow a fucking beard like this. Let's be real. Every single woman. Yeah. Uh, Cause we don't know what, I what do. Dan identifies with on a daily basis. So. I don't even know. No. Sometimes I have one of those magic eight balls, but it has all the gender possibilities on it. And yep. I shake that bitch up in the morning and then I know what to wear. Well, there's 162 of them now. So uh, I think We're it's in the seventies. Sure. Uh, <laughs> <I don't know. laughs> um, so with this suit that's going on, uh, what are you hoping to happen? That, that, that this bill eventually gets passed? Yeah, so the suit, the lawsuit was denied like a year ago yeah. because of Ferris Doctrine. Right. And so we just want to get this bill passed so that there's something that holds the military accountable to follow their own rules that they set up. They set these rules up. No one else did. Just, just follow them. Um, and there's just so many ways that they don't have to do it. Uh, so how can people at home uh, or who are watching and or listening help you right now? So anyone who wants to help can ask members of the Hask and SAS, the House Armed Services Committee and the Senate Armed Services Committee to support this bill. Okay. And I was just going to say it's something that would – with um, the missing Vanessa Guillen, or, yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. um, this is something that like her family would need, and there's just no legal recourse to hold anyone accountable. And I would say like the um, the an accused person constitutionally has the right to a fair trial, but the victim doesn't. Like, what? How is that fair? I'm in the mil- we're in the military too. Yeah. Just just give it a fair investigation and a fair trial. 
Yeah, it's uh, it's a strange story, but um, one that I'm sure others are going through right now. And uh, we really appreciate you stopping by today. Is there a website or anything that people can directly go to? Um, Natalie has a website. I'd have to check what it is, though. I think it's just Ferris Doctrine. Okay, uh, great. So I tell you what, we'll pop that yeah, up on I'll the screen it. here. Um, and uh, thank you for being on the show today, and thank you for sharing your story. Thank you. All right, take care. Bye. Was there a lot of girls in your unit, Dan? No, I was in the infantry. And so is that not allowed? At the time, there were no women in the infantry. Okay. Uh, now there's some, I guess. I don't know what the landscape's like now, but <clears throat> um, primarily it's uh, the women that were – with us, we're in our FSC, our support company. So they were like water filtration, ammo specialists, chemical specialists, people like that. So yeah. it, it, it came about when there was modular, uh, uh, instead of having just line units and then everybody else, it was modular. So we had like a, a cap scout platoon. We had a forward support company, about all that shit. It just changed. I, I guess the reason why I ask, right, through you and obviously all, all of our friends, like I've heard different stories about, uh, basic training in the military and everything else, mm -hmm. right? When you get somebody who's attractive like she is, mm -hmm. is it not distracting? Um, look, man, if you can't fucking do your job with a distraction around, how the fuck are you going to walk through a market in Baghdad and decide who is and isn't a bad guy? I get fucked with that logic is what I say. Like these people that say, oh, women can't fucking be there because we'll fucking do this. Look, mm -hmm. dude, if you don't have the discipline to do your job, then you don't have the discipline to do your job, period. If a woman can do that job then let her do it i don't give a shit but the fact is physically speaking most women cannot do it like it's a matter of of uh bone density and muscle mass it's it's science like most women can't do that job it's just a fact but some people can yeah so i don't really care about it my opinion like people think it's um i understand the I, the concept that it's problematic for good order and discipline and that i understand the that a, a man will be compelled to help a woman before he helps another man. Mm -hmm. Even if the triage says to help the man first, I understand that, but this is a tough job. You need discipline to do it. And if you're not disciplined enough to do it, you don't deserve to do it. My opinion. Yeah. I was always curious about it, you know, from a civilian perspective, like there is no job that we're forced into that. It's just like, Oh, Hey, you're with a woman all day. Well, police, um, police have yes. plenty of women. So yeah, yeah. Like but fire I mean, departments, there's all kinds of women out there. But, but uh, in times of war, I guess is what I'm saying. Like that's, it's a little different than, you know. It is a special circumstance for sure. Yeah. Right. And it, it, I, I completely agree with that. But um, <clears throat> like Shannon Kent was a fucking warrior. Yeah. There's, there's a lot of examples of women that can do whatever job it is. Right, she wasn't humping like fucking a hundred pound ruck on a line unit in the fucking eighty second airborne or anything, but she was doing one of one of the most dangerous jobs on the planet. She lost her life for it in defense of this country. How dare we disabuse somebody of the right and the privilege to serve their fucking country? That's to me is the most horrible thing you could say to somebody. Yeah, I, I agree. I was just curious your thoughts on it because um, it's it's it is strange. Um, well, we just got to be real about it. I'm real from both sides. I think that people that can accomplish it and have the will to do it deserve to do it. And I think it's a privilege to be able to serve our country. But if you can't do it, you can't do it. We cannot change the standard. If it's fucking 18 push-ups or 18 pull-ups to get into Marsoc, it's 18 pull-ups for everybody, no matter what their fucking dick or pussy looks like. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. I don't give two fucks about that. If you can do the job, you can do the job. If you can't, you can't. Did you ever date somebody in the military while you were in? No. Is that not allowed? Uh, it's allowed, yeah, but I just didn't. I mean, I didn't really date a whole lot when I was in the military. Gotcha. Because of, uh, because of the unit you were in? or <sighs> No, it was just uh, <clears throat> operational tempo was really high. Didn't really have time for that. And I was, uh, you know, I was still doing a lot of um, uh, figuring out who I am as a human being. You know what I mean? So yeah. I, didn't, I wasn't, I mean, like, I've always been very cognizant of who I am and what s state and life I am. And I've always tried to not subject people to my bullshit. If I know I'm like walking through fucking quicksand, I'm like, ah, don't jump on my shoulders just yet. Let's right. wait. Let's wait until I get the fuck out of here first. And it's, <laughs> it's, uh, 
you know, you can use that as a crutch sometimes because you just don't want to let anybody in. I understand that too, but I, I felt at the time at least, not that this is the fucking treaties on my goddamn personal life, but I felt that uh, I just wasn't prepared to deal with that kind of shit. I, I, frankly, people that make relationships work in the military are goddamn superheroes. I don't know how any, anybody does it, honestly. I, I don't either. And look, t- obviously Tiffany. Um, yeah. Drinking bro. And they're both in. They're both in. Yeah. At the same time. And I, and I wondered if it was easier or harder, I guess, to date somebody in because at least you know what the other one is going through. <sighs> yeah, I guess there's a, there's a, uh, that's a part of it. Like you understand that the sacrifice, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And you, at least if you, if you're both, uh, you know, operating in good faith, you understand the reason people make that sacrifice. It's not for fame or glory. That's for goddamn sure. Cause there is none. Um, it's, and it's, it's, it's just, uh, I don't, I want to say a calling cause I don't know what that really implies, but it, it's something that you've like, I've always felt like a soldier. Like I fans of the show know that I have a very, I don't even know what you would call it. I have a uh, antagonistic relationship with my dad, right? But I did exactly what he did. And I did exactly what my grandfather did, who was also a piece of shit. My grandfather was a, a racist of epic proportions, uh, like an active, a racist activist, essentially. Uh, and my dad, obviously, I've talked about him before, but I did exactly what they did. I was an airborne infantryman. And it's, I don't know why it wasn't, it certainly wasn't to fucking gain their approval or to follow in their footsteps, but it's just like something I felt like I should do. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So I don't know what that is, but if you're operating in good faith like that and you meet somebody that's doing the same thing, I think it does make it easier to understand the sacrifice that someone's going through for sure. Yeah. Um, it's funny how you kind of end up doing what your father or parents do. Yeah. Um, eventually most of my, almost everybody, uh, in my, in my family was military. Um, during the time, and I've talked about this in the show before, um, I never had a desire to, to go into the military, but it was also because of what was going on at the time. Mm-hmm. It, it was a peacetime <clears throat> moment for everything. Like nothing was happening yeah. uh, at that time where, you know, 9 11 and all that mm-hmm. other stuff um, uh, had not gone on or anything else. And uh, wasn't really anything to fight for at the time. So mm-hmm. nobody, you know, we were around, certainly chatted about it or was right. even thinking about it at that time. But uh, it's weird because if you di- if you disliked your father mm-hmm. and grandfather, that you would do the exact same thing they did. Well, I mean, look, I just felt like a war. Here's here's I, it's it's interesting the way that I came about it because I don't like bullies because my dad was a bully. He was uh, he's a smart guy, but he's um, he's one of those people that I bitch about a lot. People that are intellectual cowards that are unable to face what's wrong with them, and they lean on things like. In his case, it was religion, but they lean on things that kind of absolve them of the shitty behavior that they continue to do. Um, uh, So it's, you know, that's part of it, I guess. But for me, it was uh, it was more about like service. You know what I mean? It was more about. uh, Well, you know, honestly, I don't even know. I just felt like I didn't like bullies and I knew that I was a big dude. I'm very smart very athletic i can go fuck some people up and stop them from fucking other people up Mm. but i that that's a very romanticized version of it maybe i just wanted to fuck people up and that was an excuse to do it you know what i mean i don't know um like you you really have to look uh, hopefully that's not the case but i was very comfortable with violence and i knew that i could do one of two things with that i could be a piece of shit or i could do something to help people and i made the choice that my dad and grandfather didn't make in my opinion you, when you were talking about your grandfather, who was an epic racist, was he yeah. clan? Was he in the clan? He was the uh, Grand Dragon of South Carolina for a while. Yeah, so he went to. Are North, you fucking serious? Yeah, he went to Northwestern University. Got a PhD in psychology. Had a private psychology pra- practice in in Illinois for years, and then for some reason moved back to South Carolina and joined the the clan. I think he was arrested in the late eighties for like some kind of weapons charge or explosives charge or some shit. It was weird. Did he go to prison? Uh, no, he paid a lot of money to not go to prison. And it's a good old boy kind of system down there in, in Columbia, South Carolina. You know no it is, way, uh, yeah. dude. So we yeah. joke about that shit all the time. Where it's just like, oh, was your family in the clan? But uh, yeah. yeah, no shit. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. This is just what I've heard. I, was, I didn't talk to him. He, when I was 12 years old, he told me a story about where black people came from. Mm-hmm. I was like, all right, I don't, I don't ever need to talk to this guy again. And I never did. Like at 12 years old, I was like, nope. <laughs> all set on that. all done with you never spoke to him again never saw him again until i saw his dead ass in a casket at his fucking funeral really yep 
That's fascinating. So fuck him, obviously. But yeah, uh, <clears throat> yeah, it was weird. Yeah. It was weird growing up Definitely. around all that shit because I did not feel like that at all. It, it's even more strange because usually it has a strong influence on you as a kid. Like the people that I know in this world, luckily it's very few mm-hmm. that I've met in my life who are super racist. Yeah. Um, like, you, you know, it, it's, it's odd when you're out and you hear somebody throw a hard R out there where you're like, yeah. oh, what the <clears> fuck? <throat> what, what, what time is this? Are we in the 1920s? Like, yeah. um, it's super rare. But when I do, I always think about it. I was like, man, I wonder who their parents are. Because it usually comes from your parents or something like that. Uh, yeah, it's like religion. Yeah. Like, if you took a poll of everyone that is religious in this country, uh, I, would, I would guess that uh, 99% are the same not just religion, but the same faction of the same religion that their parents were. Mm-hmm. That'd be my guess. Yeah, because it's same. It is. It just is what it is, and that's because religion has become more of a cultural apparatus than it has an actual doctrine. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, like Jews, for example, and uh, there are some very, like Orthodox Jews, for example, that are very they like by the letter of the law and all that stuff. But people in Israel and the the Jewish people that we have as friends that are like in the, that live primarily in like Florida in the Northeast and shit like that. They're Jewish. That's their culture and heritage. But it's not like they're not going to fucking follow you down the street like, hey, you can't fucking do this. It says right. it right here. Like, no, it's not a thing anymore. So I think um, a lot of modern religions kind of gone that way, which is interesting because then you can really understand why those things came about in the first place. Like the no pork thing yeah. is because you couldn't preserve pork back then. Mm-hmm. People were dying because they were eating rancid pork. So they made a rule about it. Said God said to do it. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Like it's, it's, it makes sense. Yeah. But it doesn't make sense anymore. Right. And right. not being able to eat meat and cheese at the same time. Sorry, brother. <laughs> In and out all day. All day. God's just going to have to deal with it. Yeah. I, I was thinking about the racism thing this week because somebody's like, where is, where, where is it coming from these days? Like for kids and things like that. Um, and I was like, man, it, it, it either comes from your parents because you're not born like that. Nobody's born racist. No. Um, it, it comes from your <clears throat> parents, your family or whatever. Um, I think it's almost like a reverse victim mentality. Yeah. Like there's been a pushback against racist horseshit over the last fucking several years. And a lot of white people feel attacked because they get uh, lumped in with assholes. And that's not the case. Most people don't think that way. Um, Most people don't think negatively about somebody because of the color of their skin for sure. I don't think any, well, there's plenty of people that do that. I'm just sorry. But I don't think any reasonable person thinks that way. They may dislike parts of culture and this or that, but I don't fucking like the way uh, fucking people drive in Mexico. That doesn't mean I hate Mexicans. Right. I just don't like the way they fucking... Puerto Rico is actually worse than Mexico, by the way. driving wise. Yeah, they fucking... every Find me a car in Puerto Rico that doesn't have dents on the fucking fender. Find me one that's, that's not a brand new car. Because <laughs> I've, I've spent months and months down in Puerto Rico. Every car is fucked down there. They just drive into each other for fun, I guess. I don't know if it's like an ongoing game of Demolition Derby and whoever wins gets the state. I don't know what the <laughs> fuck is going on. But that doesn't mean I hate Puerto Ricans. It's like something annoying about their culture. Like people use coded language a lot like that to talk about stuff when they're concealing their true racism. Yeah. But I'm just bitching because I want to fucking be able to drive without my car getting dinged up. Yeah, of course. You know what of I mean? course. I don't know. I was lucky enough uh, growing up, I never heard anyone in my family, like n- nobody was racist and I never heard anybody say like the N-word and all that shit yeah. growing up. So, and surprising because <clears throat> I grew up in Georgia all my life. I heard other people say it. No, I'm sure, yeah. Um, but, uh, and then thinking back on it, you know, it was like, oh, those the, the kids who were saying it, their parents were super fucking racist. Yeah. And I was like, that's eh, not a big surprise. David Cross does a really good bit. I think it's in If Baseballs Had AIDS or something like that is the name of the special. I don't remember. <laughs> um, it's something stupid. But <clears throat> he does a really good bit about growing up Jewish in Atlanta in the 70s, which you can imagine how that was. Oof. Like he would go for sleepovers at his parents' house like, hey, do y'all people eat oatmeal? Like, I guess. I don't fucking know. I'm fucking six years old, dude. The fuck are you talking about? It's just, I mean, that stuff to me is hilarious. I love the differences in people. Like, I was talking to someone the other day, I'm like, about just f- physical flaws. Like, mm-hmm. people feel a certain way about their own physical flaws, like a scar, for example. But to me, there's something very beautiful in that. I can look at a quarter inch of your body. Like, we could be in in complete darkness and I can see a quarter inch of your body and know exactly who you are. So there's something beautiful about that. Mm-hmm. Like being able to identify you by the things that make you different. And it's like, there's nothing wrong with that intrinsically. Like if you use it for, to, to like 
push your prejudice agenda or some shit like that. Of course that's bad, <clears throat> but recognizing what's different about each other is that's, that's a level of appreciation that I don't think you can find with PC culture. You know what I mean? Right. Like it, PC culture becomes fascist over time. You know what I mean? It just has to, that's the old, that's the, the logical result of PC culture. And I don't like that. I like being able to say weird shit, but I also like, uh, ethnic food. Right. You know, like all of my friends, I, I, Ooh, yeah. It's these kids riding their fucking little pit bikes. bikes out here. It might Ring. be, brap, actually, rap, it, it, might be it might be Jared. Actually, he's just driving his pit bikes around the office. Probably. He, um, he drives the childlike ones though. You know that, right? Yeah, that's what those are. Yeah. They're the one tens yeah, or whatever. Yeah. Um, yeah, I don't know. I, I, I had a lot. When I was in Oakland, I had, uh, quite a few Arab friends, but not necessarily because I cared one way or the other, another, but I do enjoy the food. So like, Hey, I'll fucking, I'm not going to fast all day, but I'll show up for the feast tonight. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'll be there. <laughs> like, be there for like, the feast. And they, you know, wanting to bring me in, they would agree to that, but I think it was probably rude of me, but whatever, man, I got fed. Yeah. I don't give a shit. Yeah. Good <laughs> to go. Uh, shit. We've been rapping. Do we get uh, sponsors? We oh, actually yeah. put this whole shit wagon on the air. Sorry, sponsors. Um, afterwards, I want to get your, your thoughts on this uh, Bolton shit that's going on with his new book. Here. Oh, Mr. Mustachio. Yeah. I want to get your thoughts on that. Uh, right now, we got ghostbed.com forward slash drinking bros at the top finest mattresses in the land. Still 25% off everything in the entire store. Pillows, sheets, adjustable bases, you name it. Everything is 25% off at ghostbed.com forward slash drinking bros. And if you get a, a mattress these days, no matter which one it is, across the board, you get two free pillows. Summertime is here. I would highly recommend those cooling mattresses. Uh, those are the best in the biz. Go to ghostbed.com forward slash drinking bros today and get it. As always, they got the 36-month page to go program. No interest on those. And it's still applicable with them deals at ghostbed.com forward slash drinking bros. <laughs> I'm getting one of those adjustable bases soon. I, I, I am too. Uh, I am too. After the uh, upcoming uh, jaunts we have coming yeah. up. Uh, next up, we got boxofawesome.com. Talked about Box of Awesome yesterday. Mm -hmm. um, and a lot of people hit me up and they were like, yo, dude, I didn't know until I knew. And I was like, yeah, it's yeah, one it's of those dope. companies where it's just like, once you get it and you get that box shipped to your house every month, you kind of wait for it. Yeah. You're just like, is this, is this fucking showing up It's today? a nice little treat. It is. It's almost like uh, I do this a lot. I get fucking high as shit at night. Yeah. And then order random nonsense off Amazon. And then it shows up. I'm like, oh, fuck. I forgot about that. Oh, I forgot yeah. about but that. But that's the best kind. It's like buying gifts for yourself, but you use amnesia essentially to forget what the gift is but in this case you don't have to do that you just let them take care of it for you yeah which is great so when it shows up once a month because it's a subscription go to boxofawesome.com you just get a box full of cool shit once mm -hmm. a month and uh with the promo code drinking bros you get 20 percent off first box is 20 uh 20 percent off with the promo code drinking bros off your first box and when it shows up dude man it's like a little tiny christmas it's like a little tiny Christmas present every single month. We're we're at half Christmas almost now. Are we? Close. Oof, this this year, man, feels like it will never end, Dan. Until we get sports back, uh, I need some excitement in my life. Therefore, I'm ordering shit from Box of June twenty awesome fifth. Promo code Drinking Bros twenty percent off. You can get knives, hatchets. Yeah. Fucking. They've got kids, this really nice Damascus steel blade on there right now that looks dope. I saw it in some of their advertisements. Man, I, love I don't have Box one, though. Awesome, Box of Awesome. Maybe you can send me one, please. Yeah, right? Uh, go to boxofawesome.com, promo code Drinking Bros, 20% off. Next up, we got getroman.com forward slash Drinking Bros, D'Anthony. Mm -hmm. uh, get that boner on. Yeah, get it up. Get it up. Uh, everybody's taking the fucking boner pills during the quarantine times. Oh, yeah, I'm sure their business has gone through the roof because that dicks go through the they're roof. They're on fire, dude. Yeah, they've passed Viagra <laughs> at this point, so uh, sorry, not sorry, nothing we can do about it. But uh, it comes in a discreet package, online doctor visit for free. You don't have to show up to your doctor and say, hey, hey, Martha, Dr. Chad, or whoever it is, and say, I can't get my dick to work. I need help. I'm not going to a doctor named Chad. I, there's no way. But it's Dr. Chad. No. Okay. No, no, it's, it's 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 because Chad is a is a white name. I don't go to white doctors. What if it was Shad Chad? Her name is Shad Chad. 
if if her name C-H- was C H A D and it was pronounced Chad and she was an Indian woman, I would absolutely go to her okay. for a doctor. But not if it was a white dude named Chad. No way. Doctor Chad Chad is entering the room. Go to getroman.com forward slash drinking bros today and uh, free doctor visit, 48 hour shipping, discreet packaging so no one will know what it is. You can mm. hide your boner pills. You won't be able to hide that boner, but you can hide the Well, pills. you can tuck. You can tuck into your belt. I mean, look, Super Bad taught us everything we need to know about hiding boners, I think. Yeah, you can definitely tuck in your belt on that. Yeah, although I don't know if, I mean, consider the physics involved with Jonah Hill tucking his dick into his belt because there's other Yeesh. stuff going on at that During belt that line movie? as well. Yeah. yeah. During that movie, it have been tough. He's thinner now. Like once every three years, he gets thin. Yeah. So it's like, I don't know if that has something to do with astrology or whatever. I don't, <laughs> know. I don't know what's happening there, but uh, yeah, I wouldn't recommend the tides getting near his belt. No. No, I wouldn't either. Because it's got its own gravity. <laughs> it's its own equator right there, that belt. Um, and then Thompson Cigar, dude, uh, is on here. You're a gigantic fan of ThompsonCigar.com. I, I love them. Actually, <clears throat> I've been buying cigars from them since... Um, let me think. I found one of their old uh, magazines in my house, actually. It's like a yeah, bro- yeah. brochure for all the shit that they had. I've been buying stuff from them since the first time I ever went to Puerto Rico, which was 2011. Yeah. Like, I, I sampled some cigars down there. I'm like, oh, I really like these. And I didn't, I wasn't, it was where, when I was kind of getting into it, I didn't know about all the brands. I'm like, where can I find all the brands? Because I want to fucking... I want a good selection, but I want different shit. I don't want to buy from one person that has just the same kind of stuff. They've got everything. Yeah, so I've been I, buying from them, what is that, fucking nine years now? Yeah, I've got, I think, close to 15,000 cigars at ThompsonCigar.com. Yeah. <clears throat> they never, ever, ever do promo codes because, let's face it, they don't have to. Yeah. Um, they're the biggest in the business. Um, so go to ThompsonCigar.com today. Use the promo code Drinking Bros. Uh, that'll get you, I think, what, 15% off of orders of 75 bucks and 20% off of orders of 100 uh, Father's Day is coming up, dude. You have a, a few days yep. left. Your dad's some cigars. <laughs> Go to ThompsonCigar.com. Promo code Drinking Bros. We'll get you those discounts. Yep. Father's Day is Sunday. It is. It's this Sunday. Uh, this is when I'm cherished. You don't want to miss it. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> is it a tricky time around your house, Dan? No. My Kids house, showing up. My house is me and my two fucking Boston Terriers. My a lot man. of knocks on the door, though. Dan. No, I've I would never tell a woman my name. <laughs> Come on, no. I, I have I have a bunch of fake IDs. And they're like, why do you have these fake IDs? You're fucking thirty nine years old. I'm like, well, you know, yeah. There's other reasons to hide your identity. Of course, right? Of course, I could only imagine you if a if a newborn baby showed up in a basket, old mm-hmm. school, right? Like Moses. Yeah, and and they just said, hey, Dan, uh, the woman you had a one night stand with has passed. She's no I would, longer with that'd us. That'd be dope as fuck. I got a free baby. Yeah. I like babies. And so you had to raise the baby. Can you imagine a child raised by me? No, I can't. Like, that would be pretty amazing, I think. Because <laughs> I personally feel like I am an amazing human being. <laughs> uh, but I, I also understand that I communicate in a way that isn't necessarily conducive to teaching a child how to behave in public. Right. So the, the results would be, I, it should be a reality TV show. The, I, I, that's what I believe. Like, send your children to me for six months. Yeah. Right. And then see what happens. We, and we don't, I'm not teaching them shit. They just hang out with me for six whole months. For six months. Uh, we play sports. We go to sporting events, you know, hang out, fucking play video games. I'll play Fortnite with them. I don't give a shit. <laughs> it's the baby process of it. I've got a one and a half year old. Oh, the baby thing. I don't think he that is difficult as yeah, shit. Yeah. I don't, I don't think that parents should even have babies. I think there should be some kind of organization that takes care of your baby until it's like two or three years old and then you get your baby back. There's no point. Like M- yeah, imprint on it for a couple of months, like three right. months maybe, and then send that baby off to school and you can get it back when it's fucking two or three years old. That, that's, uh, that first couple of years is rough, man. Uh, after that, it's a blast. But the first couple of years is tough. Um, I want to get your thoughts on this, uh, this book here um, that's coming out possibly next week. Um, the, the government is obviously suing here. Um, and this is, uh, this is your boy Bolton. What, would you, what kind of mustache would you call that? Um, Walrus? He looks like the fucking, uh, what's that movie, that, uh, that cartoon that Danny DeVito was in, Snorlax or some shit? Mm-hmm. Or is that what it is? Yeah. Dr. Seuss. Huh? Dr. Seuss. Dr. Yeah. Seuss, yeah. Snorlax, yeah, that's what he looks like. Snorlax, let me fucking look that up. Yeah, so John Bolton's book is supposed to come out, and then he's supposed to be doing this explosive interview this weekend with ABC. Um, 
Yeah, I, in this book, and I'm going to read just a couple of the bullet points here. Um, allegedly, he asked uh, the president of China, Trump, for uh, re-election help. It's, it seems strange. Why? What, what, what the fuck is that going to do with anything? He, he asked uh, the president of what? Yeah, I, so he, this is allegedly, this is according to this, this John Bolton book that's supposed to come out. Here are some of the top mm-hmm. bombshells. Uh, he calls Trump a liar, and it's, he says uh, that Trump asked uh, President Xi of China for re-election help for this upcoming election. How would the fucking president of China help? I, I don't know. Um, it says that he okayed concentration camps, um, and that's uh, Pompeo said that uh, Trump is a piece of shit and a liar. Well, I mean, there's a decent so... chance that happened. I mean, people talk shit in public or in against public officials all the time, whether they work for them or not. I don't think that's that wouldn't be that surprising. But so, I mean, let's uh, according to this exclusive excerpt here that's in the the Wall Street Journal, um, mm-hmm. the president pleaded with uh, Chinese leader Xi Jinping for domestic political help, subordinated national security issues to his own reelection prospects and ignored Beijing's human rights abuses. Hmm. Um, as far as Beijing's human rights abuses, that's been going on for... Yeah. Yeah, ever, it's certainly ever, not For new. every president. Yeah. Um, it's, it's funny, man. I, everybody's always turned a blind eye to China. Nobody's giving a fuck over there because they got too much money. Yeah, I don't know. I Whenever mean, anybody has money, nobody gives a shit. I feel like um, John Bolton is a giant piece of shit himself. Yeah. Uh, so... And, you know, we'll see what he says, and we'll weigh it against the balance of all the other things we know, just like any other piece of information. But, like, <clears throat> I feel like all these, and I again, everybody knows my record. I'm I am not a fucking Trump defender by any stretch of the goddamn imagination. But I feel like these people coming out of the woodwork, like uh, all these generals and DOD officials and, and national security officials, they are upset with that Trump conducts business outside of their fucking purview. Yeah. They want control. They always want control. We're going to talk about it on the fake news tomorrow. Um, they always want control of everything. And all these old school establishment, defense department, and intelligence community people are like, fuck him, he can't do that. Fuck him, he can't do that. Well, he did it. Uh, so I don't know what to tell you. They're, they're, I feel like Trump does a lot of fucked up shady shit, probably a lot of illegal shit too. But it's nothing that people before him didn't do he's just doing it out in the open and saying i don't care if you like it or not this is the way things are done right like he that's the way he does business uh, that's offensive to people because it's like the fucking <clears throat> it's like if the emperor walked out in his quote-unquote new clothes and admitted to everybody like i'm not wearing shit dude my dick's out and everybody's like whoa you can't say that because the next emperor is gonna have his dick out and we need people to believe that his dick's not really out I'm yeah like, well sorry brother his dick's out <laughs> his dick's i don't know what to fucking tell you and trump is the dick out president Nothing I can do, hombre. Yeah, so it is what it is, man. It, it feels like all of these guys who get fired from the White House, mm. uh, part of me questions whether or not they actually wanted to work there in the first place, or did they just want to get fired so they could get a book deal out of it? Maybe. these books are coming out at a record pace right yeah. now. Um, his niece has a book out now yeah. um, about Trump and what it was like growing up with Trump and all this other shit. Yeah. Uh, Trump himself and the United States government has filed a lawsuit against Bolton trying to block this book from ever coming out. We'll see about that. Um, to the people who are <laughs> listening right now and or watching, um, it's one of those things where a book like this has to clear the Department of Defense. It does, yeah. Um, in the first interview, you know, she was obviously talking about the DOD. That's what that stands for. Mm-hmm. And um, fuck, man, I can tell you in, in the process of math book, there was 17 months. I don't know how these people are cutting the line here to get these books approved or i, mean, I don't either it's, it's man wild. i mean it, there, there's the one attorney that can get shit done that we know about natalie yeah well no i mean like about getting books, oh yes, yes getting yes, books correct, correct yeah but yeah. aside from that person i mean I, I honestly don't know how anybody gets anything done in an expedited way but even he told me he was like hey man i, I don't even it's not even i'm not worth a phone call until after six months mm-hmm. you know this Bolton thing, he just got fired. Like I, yeah. it feels like very recently. He, he wrote he, he, unless he's the best and fastest writer of all time, which based <laughs> on his mustache, it doesn't seem like that's the case. No, uh, he wrote that book while he was still there. Yeah, which is like, why do you take 
the job as a national security advisor and while you're doing it, write your fucking book. I, I, Serve the country or don't do it. If you're trying to make bones for yourself yeah. by serving the country, that's what all of Congress and the Senate are. I, I, I feel like scumbags. People, people know they're all fucking scumbags. Um, not our uh, drinking bro of the week, though. This one was submitted by Justin Klitsky. Uh, says, hey, Russ, I got a nomination for drinking bro of the week. Um, I'd like to nominate uncle, my uncle, Kendall Ward, for drinking bro of the week. Last night, 6 16 20, he lost his battle with pancreatic cancer. He was a fireman in the Air National Guard for a long time and served 25 years with the Sioux Falls Fire and Rescue in Sioux Falls, South Dakota. He was the coolest uncle and always had an ear to listen or a good joke to make us laugh. He was a great dad to his two boys and he was a huge role model for me joining the military and serving uh, an LE when I got out. I really appreciate it. Thanks, man. Uh, thank you, Justin, and cheers. Cheers. Sorry for your loss, but uh, you sound like an awesome fucking dude. Yeah. Um, I'll be watching this interview over the weekend uh, with Bolton. Mm-hmm. Uh, I like to see these fucking guys and see how uh, how they are on camera. Mm-hmm. You know, because if they're real fidgety or just matter of fact, you can kind of gain knowledge from them. The problem with it is, and this like you know, Democrats are really hoping that oh, this is going to help mm-hmm. us. It's not, man. I, uh, it never helps. It never helps. One, two. We're still really far away from the election at this yeah. point, and uh, we'll see. We'll see what happens here. Uh, I want to talk about something that you said right before we went on air. You were talking about Elizabeth Warren has been getting a lot of press yeah. this week for VP of, of Biden. I know why. I can tell you why on this one. So as far as like the Hollywood circles and shit, like I still get invited to this bullshit even though you know, I'm a fucking conservative. Yeah. I still get invited to these <clears throat> goddamn parties. In the last two weeks... The, the two invitations I got, one was for, and these are, I don't know why they're doing this, but they're virtual uh, funding luncheons, but you get to watch the candidates online and Oof. you're invited into like a Zoom room with these fucking people. Yeah, I'm all set on that. One was with Kamala Harris and one was with Elizabeth Warren. And you're with Biden and, you know, it, it's basically a little dick sucking uh, sash here to try to become the, the vice president nominee right Mm -hmm. and i feel that it's probably down to those two um the biggest fundraiser out of the two however was elizabeth warren so keep an eye on that because it's like you always say on the show money's the end all be all for this shit so you know you can forget about race and everything else that's going on if elizabeth warren's the one that's bringing in the most cash Mm -hmm. she might get the nomination it would be a mistake, I think, in my in in today's world with everything that's going on right now, to overlook a black candidate, though. Yeah, um, I think because if it is Elizabeth Warren, like I predicted many months ago, and I obviously didn't think any of the shit was going to go down with what happened in the George Floyd mm-hmm. sitch, um, I think it's too big of a moment that the Democrats are trying to seize right now. Mm-hmm. And if you pass over a black candidate, uh, I think people are going to be turned off they were already turned off the biden got the nomination yeah now this would be the final nail of like all right great it's all fucking white people again uh we're not going to go vote so congratulations yeah congratulations so we'll see we'll see what happens but uh i'm certainly going to peep out uh (coughs) this this abc interview over the weekend with john bolton yeah we'll see how it goes and uh kick my dick up on that um Subscribe on iTunes and uh, and Drinking Bros podcast on YouTube. All of our shows are on video, and we've still been going every single day. So we'll try to keep this pace up. Uh, we've had fun doing it. We appreciate you guys watching and listening with us. Uh, when you do go to iTunes, give us a five star review and a quick um, quick little uh, notes on there mm-hmm. on the review. It's free and it helps uh, scoot us on up the charts. For Danthony, Danthony Holloway, I'm Ross Patterson. This is the Drinking Bros. Good night, everyone.